This episode of Scott Brownlee's Internet Rabbit Hole is brought to you by GoDaddy. I, uh, I got nothing. Time to jump in the Internet Rabbit Hole! So the other day, I came into the studio and started looking at my set, and I was kind of fixated on this little corner. You know, the corner with a young Jenny McCarthy staring at me with love in her eyes. But I kept on getting distracted by that handsome devil, John Stamos. You know, the Highlander from those yogurt commercials that never ages. So then I thought, you know what I think this 8x10 glossy autographed photo of John Stamos would like? A companion. Specifically, an action figure of his best friend, Bob Saget. So I went over to eBay to see if full house toys were a thing that existed in the 90s. Of course, eBay was all like this. You got it, dude. <laughs> but as I looked closer at the box, I learned something. The first was that if I actually won the auction, I would now own both Olsen twins in action figure form. The, the other one's over there, right next to uh, George Burns. They're on a date. That's what I like to think is happening on my set. The second was that the full house toys were made by Tiger. Y'all remember Tiger Electronics? If not, they were the company that produced tons of terrible handheld LCD games for kids whose parents didn't know that portable gaming in the 90s evolved past the point of beeping calculators. Seriously. We had access to Game Boy games for pretty much the same exact price, which, you know, had actual graphics and gameplay. Tiger Games had no sense of what games were or how they worked. I mean, they made a game based on the cartoon Doug, whose only controls were left, right, faster, and Doug. There were literally two action buttons whose options were to Doug or to Doug faster. What the fuck does that even mean? Yet somehow, we still bought off these little pieces of trash that, if you held it at the right angle, could spoil the entire outcome of the game because literally all of the game's animations, villains, and hazards were all in one spot on the tiny little screen. And Tiger somehow knew that we would buy them no matter what game they put out. So they grabbed the licenses for everything they could. Literally, everything they could. Don't believe me? Here's a speed run. Tiger Electronics made in no particular order a handheld for Altered Beast, Sonic the Hedgehog 3, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, Sonic Spinball, Beavis and Butthead, Batman, Robocop, Power Rangers, Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest, Castlevania Symphony of the Night, Double Dragons 1, 2, and 3, Mega Man 2 and 3, The Terminator, Space Jam, Police Academy, Aladdin, Pit Fighter, Street Fighter 2, NBA Jam, Strider, and literally every other video game, movie, or TV show aimed at squarely at 90s babies. Tiger Electronics did it all, even a full house game. Yep, there was a full house handheld game, because that's a thing we all wanted. But somewhere along the way, we wised up and stopped buying these giant plastic hockey pucks and started buying real handheld games. Tiger, of course, panicked and released the R-Zone, which was like if the Virtual Boy had sex with the Tiger handheld. Basically, it was a garbage gangbang. Nobody liked it. So Tiger came back again with GameCom. Not the game.com, like the packaging, pamphlet, and any and all advertising had it written. Nope. It was actually called the GameCom, and even though it only had 20 games, which were real video games and not LCD slideshows, it was a massive failure. However, it did boast some interesting features, which today sound pedestrian, but at the time were firsts, like a touchscreen and a modem which could connect to the internet. Albeit both barely worked, but still, Tiger Electronics tried. By the end of the 90s, Tiger was scrambling and needed another hit fast, and they got two of them. The first was the Digipet, which was basically a shameless knockoff of Bandai's Tamagotchi from Japan, and the second was the Furby, that nightmare fur monster that parents killed for during Christmas of 1998. So weird, right? People actually paid hundreds of dollars in seedy back alleys to get their hands on these things. Furbies were so popular, the NSA warned people not to buy them because they could potentially be hearing confidential information in your home. It was a real news article from the NSA afraid that toys were gonna listen to you. But that's not the only controversy Furby encountered, or at least so I remember. I recalled there being rumblings of Warner Brothers wanting to sue the creators of Furby for ripping off Gizmo from the movie Gremlins, and that they settled by making a Gizmo Furby. So I turned to Wikipedia, Wikipedia! and found out it wasn't true. They never did sue. But Tiger did make a Gizmo Furby, which got me back over to YouTube to watch clips from Gremlins, which was written by Chris Columbus, who directed Home Alone 2, Lost in New York, which not only had a Tiger Electronic game based on the movie, but Tiger also made the Talkboy tape recorder, featured prominently in the film, which starred Macaulay Culkin, who was in Party Monster with none other than Full House's John Stamos. Now we know. And knowing is half the battle. 
And if you want to make websites dedicated to your own memories of Tiger Electronics, you should use GoDaddy. GoDaddy has all sorts of .com domains available for just $2.95. Seriously, for $2.95. Visit GoDaddy.com and enter the promo code GAMES295. Or, if you already have a website, you can get 30% off of a new purchase with the code GAMES30. So what are you waiting for? Go to GoDaddy.com and get yourself a website. After all, it is the 90s. Some limitations apply. See the website for details. So what did we learn today? Basically, Tiger made a bunch of crappy video game related stuff in the 90s. Let me know what your favorite Tiger Electronics game was and why in the comments below. And if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And as always, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Until next time, I'm Scott Bromley saying do whatever you want with your internet history. This is the last episode we're going to do for a while. April Fools! This show's never going to go off the air! <laughs> or will it? Thank you.